This is John Van Weldon with Van Weldon Financial Group here with a Secure Act 2.0 tax update. For those of you unfamiliar with the Secure Act, it was passed into law back in 2019. And then just recently, the Secure Act 2.0 was added prior to the end of 2022. The SECURE Act 2.0 has a number of changes, including many to retirement savings rules. Now, we're only going to cover those that are most likely to affect specifically the clients that we serve. Those are uh, people who are retired or close to retirement. Those of you with significant savings that are in tax-deferred retirement accounts, think 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, etc., and who are focused on uh, stable, increasing lifetime income. We think that's critical for retirees, as well as asset preservation and a desire to minimize taxes throughout the rest of your lifetime. So we're going to focus on the SECURE Act 2.0 changes that we believe are most likely to impact people with those priorities. Uh, number one, in 2023, the SECURE Act 2.0 uh, makes changes to the required minimum distributions. Um, for many of you who are getting ready to turn age 72 this year in 2023, uh, you were probably aware that you would need to start taking required distributions from your retirement accounts this year. That has been changed and pushed back one year. So if you're turning age 72 this year, uh, you get a one-year reprieve before you have to start your required minimum distributions. For those of you who are already taking required distributions, there's no change. This rule is going to change again in 10 years. Effective 2033, uh, the age will change then from 73 to 75. Lastly, there's a reduced penalty for any required distributions that you fail to take once you reach that age. Uh, it used to be that any amount of money you were required to, dis to pull out of your retirement account that you failed to do so, you were uh, issued a penalty of 50%, which is obviously enormous. Uh, they've reduced that to 25% which is definitely going in the right direction, but it's still very substantive. So it's important that you don't forget or fail to take your full required minimum distribution at any given year once you qualify. For 2023, another rule change is that for any of you who have the option within your 401k or 403b or other retirement plan to uh, save either in a traditional uh, account, which is a tax deferred account, or a Roth side of that account, which uh, isn't tax deferred, but it's tax free once the money gets there. It used to be, or, or up till now, the rule was if you put money, if you defer money into a Roth 401k or 403b, the employer match had to go into the traditional side still. So you had to keep that traditional piece open with employer matches flowing into it. Now the employer has the option to, or you have the option to have them place those matches into a Roth type vehicle. Uh, what we don't know is how employers will respond to this or how quickly they'll respond by making that option available. But it's good for you to know that it's an option so that you can talk to your employer about adding that. Those of you who work with us know how much we like Roth uh, IRAs and Roth 401ks. So this is a really attractive change in our opinion. Uh, thirdly, there's going to be a change to qualified longevity annuity contracts referred to as QLACs. Uh, up till now, there has been a maximum of 145000 or 25% of your retirement account balance. That's being increased now to $200,000. Um, 
I'm not going to get into a full description of a QLAC. Just think of it as a way to defer the required distributions on a portion of your account to a much later date in life. And the idea being that should you live longer than you might expect, um, this will be a piece of your retirement account that you can defer taking distributions out of to later in life. Um, as we'll mention here in a few minutes, um, they sound terrific on the surface. Most people go, hey, if I can defer taking out money, defer taxes, that must be a good thing. We always encourage people to really think strategically through the long-term tax planning uh, implications of something like this because it's not always in your best interest to do, although it may sound like it on the surface. Um, 2025. Now, th this change does not apply this year or next year, but in 2025, there's going to be a significant increase in the catch-up contributions. That is the contributions that you can make to a retirement savings plan uh, if your age at that time, if in 2025 you fit into that age group of uh, individuals age 60 to 63, you'll be able to increase the amount of catch-up contributions you can make into those accounts. And it will be, uh, at that point in time, the greater of $10,000 or 150% per, of the current catch-up. And that's on top of your normal uh, contributions. You'll be able to add those amounts or the, the greater of those two amounts uh, as a catch-up contribution. Uh, we don't yet know whether they'll go into traditional or Roth 401ks. Hopefully that will become more clear as we move forward. There's also a change that's coming in 2024, so not this year, but next year, to unused 529 education funding accounts uh, that could be rolled into a Roth IRA for the benefit of the same beneficiary. Whoever was the beneficiary of the 529 account, if they don't use all those funds for education, there is now an option to roll the remainder of those funds into a Roth account. So again, on the surface, this is fantastic. We, we really like this. Uh, once you get into the details of the uh, dependency of this strategy on the underlying beneficiary and the limitations to how long the account had to be in place and how long the particular beneficiary had to be named, um, it becomes less and less likely that most people will be able to take advantage of it. Uh, but again, once, once the rule is in place, over time they may tweak it further to make it available to more people. Uh, but it's worth looking into if you do have uh, a situation where you have money in a 529 and it's been there for a long time, and you know that it's not going to be used for education for that particular beneficiary. Last but not least, um, one of our favorite uh, charitable or philanthropic planning strategies for individuals age 70 and a half or older is to uh, distribute funds uh, through a, a, tr a trustee to trustee transfer directly from a qualified retirement account or IRA to a charity of choice. Um, it's a very tax efficient way of executing charitable gifts, um, but it had to be done up till now through a direct trustee to trustee transfer. It could not be done via a rollover and that has changed. So there's a little bit more flexibility there in how those are executed. So uh, let's switch gears now as we uh, finish up and just remind you that as always, the devil is in the details. Many of these changes deal with enhancing your ability to defer taxes. To most people, this sounds good. And most people's initial knee-jerk reaction is terrific. If I can defer taxes, let me add it. But in most cases, or let me say in many cases, this is not necessarily in your best interest. We find that when we do um, in-depth, long-term tax planning for our clients, many times the ability to defer taxes actually works against 
that long-term goal of minimizing the taxes that you pay over your uh, entire lifetime. Um, a way of thinking about this is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And I think that's particularly true when it's something the government is suggesting you might want to do. Uh, so make sure you're working with, again, uh, an advisor who specializes in uh, a comprehensive retirement planning, including long-term tax planning. That's it for today. I hope that's helpful. Uh, please feel free to share this video with anyone you think might benefit, and feel free to visit us at vanweldengroup.com if you'd like to learn more about our comprehensive retirement services. Thank you, and have a great, great 2023.